Hey everyone, thank you for joining me once again as I guide you through the journey of hard swapping in Elden Ring. In the previous video, we went over a weapons inventory for invasions and discussed some useful hard swaps. Of course, if you haven't seen it yet, click on this card at the top right to check it out. A quick disclaimer before we begin. Although this video is addressed to KBM players, the concepts and choices that I will showcase are also applicable to controller players. And as I keep reiterating, hard swaps should be treated as a supplement to your gameplay and not as a substitute to mastering the fundamentals. Let's once again kick things off and explore the second category of hard swaps, talismans. First, the general concept of talisman swaps. And second, a breakdown of my preferred talisman inventory. As always, if you enjoy my content, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Part 1. The General Concept The key to appreciating talisman swaps is understanding their versatility. Whether it's for offense or defense, talismans can provide a substantial boost in key moments of a fight. But, by learning to hard swap, you can access countless combinations of setups that can help you tackle various situations. After all, hard swapping is about breaking free of the limitations imposed by the inventory system. This is important, so pay attention! Notice the position of our mouse when we click on a talisman slot? See how it hovers around that fourth row? Place your primary talisman that you wish to swap to in this location. By doing so, you essentially just have to click twice with minimal additional movement. Once you're inside the menu, there's no need to back out and re-enter the menu to change to your next talisman. Instead, you can simply press Z and X to cycle between the slots. X cycles you forward, and Z cycles you backwards. This is the key to swapping multiple talismans. Of course, the same cycling concept works for controller players as well. Ultimately, talisman inventories are dependent on the number of talismans that you, the player, are comfortable swapping with. A common mistake KVM players make is trying to exactly copy a controller player's inventory. Controller inventories are built around the least amount of button clicks while KBM inventories should be built around the least amount of mouse movement. This is why controller players swap their talismans according to the default slot numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. While it is possible to reach over, use the error case, and try to mimic their inputs, that motion is slow and will likely leave you in a compromised position. Therefore, KBM players should instead mix up the order slightly. For a single talisman, only swap the rightmost slot, and for multiple talismans, instead use this order. 1, 2, 3, 4. I will explain my rationale in the next section. Part 2. A breakdown of my talisman inventory. What you see here are three of the four initial talismans for my builds. The Earth True Favor plus 2 and the Crimson Amber Medallion plus 2 increase my overall health, and the Ritual Shield Talisman negates damage while I'm at full HP. This highlighted fourth slot is usually flexible and changes depending on the type of build I'm running. For example, on strength builds I use a lot of pierce damage weapons, so the spear talisman is a good choice. But on dex builds I prefer the Milson's prosthesis for the plus 5 in dex and the successive attack boost. Moving on, inside you can see my full inventory, and as I mentioned earlier, the talismans I immediately want to swap to are placed along the fourth row. I could go on and on about the different combinations and what to do in various situations. Instead, let's go over the locations of different blocks of talismans and what type of talismans to put in those spots. That way, you can customize it to suit your own needs. First is the Earth Tree's Favor. I only have three talisman options for this slot, and they are highlighted here. Of the three, I use the Great Jar's Arsenal the most because it helps prevent me from fat rolling in situations where I use a heavier weapon and or armor setup. The claw and hammer talismans are nice for dealing with shield poking turtles, but they are also used the least.
Next is my build specific slot, which in this case is the Millicent's prosthesis. Swaps for this slot are reserved for long-term utility talismans. I prefer keeping the Two Fingers Talisman as the primary swap because it gives plus 5 to my Faith stat so I can cast Bestial Vitality. Aside from that, I have the three plus 1 status talismans at the bottom in case I need to boost my resistances. And finally, above it I have the Kindred of Rot Talisman. It's an incredibly effective offensive tool to have in your arsenal. Equip it when you're trying to rot or poison someone, and you will receive a temporary AR boost upon proccing the status. Now it's time to take a look at the two slots I swap around the most during invasions. My short term utility talismans are lined up along the rightmost column of the page. This way I can reach them rather quickly. The most important talisman swap an invader can perform is switching to the Crimson Seed talisman. Boosting the power of your Estus is incredibly valuable. The more potent your healing, the less heals you consume, and the more flexibility you have during the course of a fight. If nothing else, incorporate this one swap into your gameplay, and your survivability will definitely increase tenfold. Another nice utility swap is switching over to the Arrow's Reach and or Arrow's Sting Talismans. The Great Bow is one of the best invasion tools in the game, so buffing its effectiveness makes perfect sense. Next, the Blessed Dew Talisman is useful for regening HP lost from chip damage, like fan daggers. You can use it in combination with the Icon Shield, Holy Ground, or Bestial Vitality to regen HP quickly. A small trick you can use to increase the speed at which you regen HP is to continuously equip and unequip the Talisman. It's a remnant from the old Dark Souls games and can be useful in a pinch. Finally, at the bottom is my least used Talisman. It's highly situational, but the Cat Talisman can prevent you from taking fall damage in case you're trying to do some parkour. Now let's move on to the offensive oriented Talisman section. This block of six are my main go-to swaps. Situationally, I use the Bullgoat's Talisman if I'm facing a lighter weapon class like Katanas or Curved Swords. Mix and match Talismans in these two slots depending on your offensive needs. Just remember to keep them bunched up so you don't have to waste time searching in the menu. A few honorable mentions are the Blue and Red Feathered Talismans at the bottom, and the Viridian Amber Medallion Plus 2 and the Turtle Talisman at the top. The Feathers are mostly for duels and in extreme cases for survivability while the Endurance Boosting Talismans are to help you run away from hyper-aggressive gank squads. Overall, this is how I like to organize my Talisman inventory, and I keep this relatively consistent across all my characters. That way, I can continuously build muscle memory to improve the speed of my swaps regardless of the build I am playing. Learning how to Talisman swap is an incredibly valuable skill, and out of the three types of hard swaps, it will likely be the one you use the most during invasions. But before you leave, I'd like to re-emphasize just one last point. Please remember to take it slow, and don't get too ambitious till you've practiced extensively. Speed can only come with time and practice. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've learned something today that you can apply to your own gameplay. Be sure to stay tuned for a follow-up third video that will cover armor swaps. Till next time, happy hunting, my fellow bad red men.